<laughs> Good morning, everybody. I, I just finished listening to a nice little song that says, If the Truth Be Told. You know, very, very rarely is the truth told. I just heard somebody ask somebody, how did they feel? And they said, they're fine. But you're not fine. There's always something wrong with you. So that's, that's a great little song. Listen to it sometime by Matthew somebody. I can't think of his last name right now. But he says, if the truth be told, we don't tell the truth all the time. People ask us how we feel. Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. But you're not. You know, so my message this morning is standing for truth. <laughs> but the truth is hard to find most of the time. I probably, none of us really tell the truth all the time. That's why I pray every day, Lord, if I've done anything today that's not like you, please forgive me of it. Because if I, and and, and it, it, is, it is just truth. The truth is, is rarely been told. Hey, man, I tell you, that's the truth anyway, y'all. I mean, you may not like it, but it's the truth anyway. But let the truth be told. Hey, Amen. All right, thank you. Good morning, everybody. The Lord is good to us. I appreciate the Lord. We're still doing, doing some work around the church. We've done... Somebody, you might need to peek in there a little bit. You see a lot of little changes. All the bathrooms downstairs have put had new fixtures put in. They look beautiful, I think. We're, we're going to still do the floors uh, in those bathrooms, hopefully before we finish our little outside work. It's hard to find workers nowadays, though. But anyway, I, I don't wore out my, some of my older men. And uh, I, I told the one yesterday, I'm about to wear him out. I don't know what's going to happen. I ain't got too many young men standing in the gap to take the place of us old men. I told him, I said, I don't know what's going to happen when, when, this, when this pastor dies. Because I don't, I don't think you're going to find him nothing like me. I think I'm the last of the Mohicans. That's, that's the way I feel about it, huh? I'm on my last legs, and I'm the one of the last of the Mohegans. Uh, so I don't know what's going to happen. When this, I know God always got somebody standing in the gap, you know. But anyway, I just wonder sometimes what's going to happen when this old man go off the scene. But anyway, God is good anyhow. And I appreciate what he has done for us and with us. Again, we're still doing some work on Saturdays. I somehow or another, I don't know how we're going to do it, but we need to, I guess, just put our mask on and get, in some, get into a cleaning atmosphere. I'm not afraid, you know. I, I know there's a, it's a time we got to be careful with this virus. I don't know where it is. I, I haven't seen it. And, and it's a virus is something you can't see. So I don't know where it comes from, where it's going. Uh, I, I can't just get in a hole and dig me a hole and get in a hole and stay there. I, I got to keep living until I die. We're all going to die. There ain't no doubt about it. So we, there's no reason to, to think you ain't going to die. You going to die. I don't know how we're going to die. We're going to die natural death or we're going to die from some catastrophe or from a virus, or how we're going to die, but we're going to die. But I'm not worried about dying. I'm, yeah. The thing is, I am prepared to die, as far as my soul is concerned. If I die in the next few moments, it's okay. It'll be okay. Uh, family bury me, and it'll be okay. We'll all get over it, and we'll go on uh, living our lives. But if it's possible, if we can get up enough nerve, and get some cleaning in our our thoughts and minds and, and come on over to the church and do some wipe down, clean down stuff, you know, like, uh, it'd be a good thing. We can put your mask on. You ain't got to hug and kiss. You can put a mask on, don't have to touch. That doesn't make everybody, make everybody stay five foot away from you, you know. Yeah. Uh, whatever you have to do. But we still need, we need to get some, some things done before, I hope, we can get it back in that church on Sunday these days. Some folks are still already in their churches and, and having church. But anyway, those are some things that we need to do. I thank God 
for what he has done and what we're done. Okay? So I ask that if, if you got a few hours on Saturday and want to come over and give us a hand, do that. Okay? Well, I can find something for you to do. I got some some painting need to be done. There's a whole lot of those things need to be done. All right. I mean, enough of that. Okay. Let me get on with, with my thought for today. Standing for truth. Thank you. First of all, let me thank all of you for your faithfulness. And you that, again, you that have donated different things. Thank you for that. Uh, we still need some tile and some other stuff that need to be done. If somebody want to donate a dollar there and a dollar here or buy something, call me. I can tell you what you need back. If you need to know what, what I need, what you need, call me. I'll let you know. Okay. Text me. Uh, write me a letter. <laughs> uh, somehow, if you, I, I'm here. My, my number hasn't changed. So you can give me a holler. Okay. All right. Standing for truth. That's my thought for this morning. Bow your heads with me. Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you for allowing us to be here again on another Sunday morning. Bless these few words that you have given me. It will be a blessing to those who are listening this morning and on the airwaves, our little airwaves. Would you bless somebody this morning in a special way? Lord, you have all power in your hand. We know that you are still in charge of what's going on in this world today. And I ask you to continue to guide us and lead us and direct us in the path that you would have us to go in. Lord, if you do all this for us, we give your name the glory and praise and honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. We, there's some things out there. I was talking about things need to be done. We need to put up a, a fence across the front of the church desk where some folks won't be using the bathroom. Oh, my God. It's a, it's a fact that right at our door, our entrance door, people have tried and made that a restroom area. And we need to do something about that. Okay? So we need to get some money to put a little fence up across there. All right. Standing for truth. I was thinking, I woke up this morning and I was thinking about God's creation. God created man and woman and and my thoughts was he used two types of, of dirt Mud, red red dirt and black dirt that was my thoughts I have I have some wild thoughts sometimes and I don't know what would have happened if God would have made some green people purple people Yellow people, orange people. Well, what would happen? What, what would the green people think they would? They should be in charge with uh, the purple people or the red people or the. You know, I just thought my mind runs wild sometimes, and I was just thinking. God made who He made, and He made us in His own image and in His likeness. And he intended for us to get along together and to live together in peace and in harmony. I'm sure if the Indians had known that Mayflower was going to cause them the trouble that it caused them, they would have never let it land. But they didn't know all that. They didn't have no foresight. But anyway, God is, is in charge. There is no man. Man thinks he is in charge. But God is in charge. This is God, the world. He made it. He created everything that we see and we hear, even the wind. It was all created by him. And he created it for his purpose and his will to be done. But this standing for truth. Let me share my scripture this morning. Second Corinthians is the fourth chapter. If you have your Bible. The first verse says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, or nor handling the word of God deceitfully, 
but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded their, the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Who is that? Have you ever had someone to ask you how you feel? Your first response in most instances, I am fine, but you're not. You can have a lot of things going on in the outside and the inside. So just stand for truth. That's why 2 Corinthians 4 and 13 says, but we continue to preach because we have the same kind of faith the psalmist had when he said, I believe in God, so I speak. The 14th verse, he says, we know that the same God who raised our Lord Jesus will also raise us when Jesus present us to himself along with you. The next verse says, all of these things are for your benefit as, and as God's grace brings more and more people to Christ. There will be great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. You won't know this until you get around my age. You get seven or nine years old, you can feel your body dying every day. But as, as your body is dying, I told, I told my brother on Saturday as we were working at the church, I feel my body dying. You know, I, my steps have gotten, have gotten shorter and shorter. I can't, I can't jump and run like I used to. I told him, I said, I can't climb the ladders like I used to. And I know it's because this old body is wearing out. I told him, I said, I don't know how much more left in it. But I, I'd rather be like my old deacon back home. He used to say, I'm not going to rust out, but I'm going to wear out. So I'm going to wear out for the Lord. Okay? But listen, for our, he, the 17th verse is, for our present troubles are quite small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us an immeasurable great glory that will last forever. Praise the Lord. So we don't look at the troubles we can see right now. Rather, we look forward to what we have not yet seen. For the troubles we see will soon be over. But the joys to come will last forever. Hallelujah. That's my first, oh, I said, preached a couple of Sundays ago, don't lose hope. That's why my hope is that I know this, this old boy is passing, is passing, life is passing him back, but I'm looking for a place, one of these, where I can live forever and have glory and happiness forever. The Christian life of the Apostle Paul is a story of grace, glory, and suffering. God worked miracles in and through Paul as he used him to speak the truth in love and plant churches and lead multitudes to faith in Christ. As Paul presented the truth of man's utter sinfulness as a, as a Savior's sacrifice and the victory over sin, sin, death, hell, and the grave. Many people have their feathers ruffled. In fact, both Jews and Gentiles alike often reacted to the gospel message with violence. Paul was beaten and imprisoned on numerous occasions 
for preaching the truth and obeying the Lord. His unwavering commitment to Christ and his word resulted in his beheading under the persecution of the emperor Nero. Is there any way to avoid suffering? Why did Paul receive such a brutal treatment? Could have been done anything to what could he have done anything to avoid suffering? Yes, he could have easily quit preaching and an unadulterated truth. He could have dialed down his message to tickle the ears and fit it in with the sinful culture. He could have bowed to the demands of the Rome and played ball with the corrupt Jewish religious leaders. He could have turned his back on his Lord and his calling and saved himself a ton of grief and pain. I think about that sometimes. I told, I told my brother on Saturday. I mean, I could have avoided a lot of things about it, uh, I, I think, if I had not done what I did do and accept the Lord as my Savior. But he could have, Paul could have, have withered under the pressure, but he did not. He truly believed that Jesus died and rose again. Therefore, he spoke the truth without stutter, stammer, or apology, or, or, or anything equivalent to that. He was faithful to Jesus Christ all the way to the finish line. And that's, what, that's my hope and my aim in this old boy's body right now. I told, I told my friend the other day, I, I have a friend in North Carolina, we text each other every day. And I told him, I said, I don't know how much longer this old boy is going to last. Uh, sometimes I feel like I'm at the, at the finish line. Reg but regardless of the circumstances and the backlash, that's what Paul did. Aren't you glad? The day in which we live, I keep saying and believe we're living in the last of the last days. The signs of Christ's soon return are all around us. One of the telltale signs is the hatred we will receive for standing up for the Lord and his word, especially preaching it from the pulpit without compromise or apology. America used to value Christianity and uphold the authority of the word of God. But those days are gone. Today, Faithful preachers and followers who lovingly hold to the clear teachings of the scripture are very abidified, mocked, scorned, or malignantized, and attacked. Can physical violence be far behind? I don't think so. I got a feeling right now we have a political thing going on in this world. I don't know what's going to happen when this, when this next few days are over. There may be some violence behind that. I think not. I had a bad dream or nightmare that we were in a physical war. Church, we need to pray before the election that the peace of God has its perfect place in the United States of America. So what is the answer after prayer? Should we water down the message to make it more palatable to the sinful sin sick world never if we really believe we will speak up and speak out just as second corinthians states and if we grow silent in the face of persecution and moral decay which we're all in right now and social lunacy did we really ever believe it at all let me encourage you to keep holding up the banner of truth. If we truly believe, we cannot help but speak. Those fighting for the right to glory in, in sin and depravity will never find peace and happiness. Sin always brings guilt and shame and death and despair, regardless of how people argue otherwise. My mother always told me 
that wrong was wrong and right was right. Even if everyone else is doing it and right is still right. Even if no one is doing it, right is still right. May we be, back, may we be found faithful to loving and stand and speak up for the Lord all the way to the end. It's no time to give up now, but it's time to get busy for the Lord. I'm sitting in my, let me tell you this story, I'm sitting in my truck on Saturday, waiting for my brothers to show up. And there's a lady sitting on the step. Usually when the pastor drive up, they know my little red truck now. And as soon as my little red truck come up, if they're sitting on the steps, they scatter. And I hear this, I hear one says, here come the pastor. So they took off because he got away. Except one lady, she's sitting on the steps and she says, I'm not going to move. So when I got out of my little truck, I started across the street. She said, good morning, pastor. She says, nice to meet you. I said, well, it's nice to meet you too. I don't know. I didn't know her, but I said, well, it's nice to meet you. So I went on in the church. I heard her talking to herself out there. As I was going on even the church, she, I mean, she was talking loud like she was talking to somebody else. And she was going on and on. And then I went on in the church, and I, I came back out to the church. And I came out and sit in my truck. And I was sitting there waiting on my, one of my brothers to call me. And then I called one of my other brothers and was talking to him a little about, about some things around the church. And this lady, was she was sitting there, and all of a sudden she started boo-hooing and crying. And she walked over to him where I was sitting in my truck, it kind of frightened me a little bit because she was sitting over there talking to herself real loud and I was kind of a little worried about her condition and I thought maybe there was something wrong with her. You know? and I thought I've seen some occasions in the Bible where people's minds wasn't right and they'd jump on you. So I was kind of a little leery there but anyway she came on over and she said and I was a, a little leery to roll my window down but I went on roll my window down and she said, asked me would I pray for her. I thought, sure, I'll pray for you. So I let my window down. She reached her hand in, wanted to catch my hand. And I prayed with her. And I said, Lord, bless this lady. And she told me she lived right around the corner there. And I, I said, well, God bless you. And I said, well, after I prayed for her, she said, thank you for praying for me. And she went away crying, woo-hooing. And I prayed, and I still praying for her this, in, in my prayer this morning before day. And I said, Lord, bless that lady. I forgot what her name. She told me her name. But remember, we're living in, we're, we're, we're in a neighborhood where people are hurting, deep in sin, even around the church. There's all kinds of things going on right now. It's, they, you, they, you use the drugs and alcohol and all that stuff. So they, they need pray, 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 pray for our our, our community and where we live. Mm -hmm. That God would bless us. And I, I remember when I was at the Ridge Avenue Church, sometimes people would just come off the street and come into church, boo-hoo, and it got and some a lot of them found relief and, and got saved. And I, I pray that sometimes where we are now. So I don't see that many come in. Once in a while someone to come in, but not like they did uh, some of the times when we was at the Ridge Avenue Church. Sometimes they were just coming off the street. And I, I thought, where we are now, it would be a good idea if we could get enough prayer and enough power of prayer around there that some of these people would come in and find Jesus and make peace and live a life of happiness like I am. I hope you are living as well. Because I'm, I'm happy. Most of the time, I'm too happy. Uh, but I'm... I thank God for, for his joy and peace that he has placed in my life and in your life. If you, have, if you don't have the joy of the Lord in your soul, it's nobody's fault but yours because he has made himself available to all of us, to this whole world. Nobody has an excuse to blame anybody but yourself if you don't have the joy and the peace of the Lord in your life. If you don't have it, it's always possible. Find yourself a place to pray. And if you don't know the Lord, ask him to show himself to you, to reveal himself to you. He probably ain't going to show himself to you physically, but you couldn't take it. 
even Paul Moses, he went to see him. And the Lord allowed him to get a glimpse of him. He put him in the cleft of a rock, and he passed by. And Moses got a glimpse of him. And in just that glimpse, he, he, he began to shine so. The children of Israel looked up at him. They couldn't hardly look at him because he was glowing so. From just the, the presence of the Lord passing by him. So we couldn't see him as he is. Not in, our, not in these fleshly bodies. But one of these days, we're going to be changed. If we're still living, when the Lord comes back, the Bible tells us we're going to be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, and we're going to be made like him if we, have, if we have him in us. And we're going to see him as he is. I'm looking for that day. And that day may be sooner than any of us think. Pray for this world that we're living in. Pray for your pastor, that he continue to be what God would have him to be. That's my hope and my aim. Thank you for listening to me. Let me pray close in prayer. Father in heaven, I thank you for your word. It's your word that has kept me over these 79 years plus. And I thank you for it. If I should see 80, I don't know whether I will or not. But I thank you for every day. You already, I have already lived past the promise. Talking with my sisters the other day. And we were talking, we live longer than our parents. And that's a blessing. And I thank God for the longevity of my life. And I have given him the majority of my life. Which is, oh, make me feel so great that I have given him more of my life than I gave to the devil. Gave the devil too much, but I thank God that I've given him more of my life than I gave to the devil. Bless, bless this church, Lord. Bless the church. Bless every member. I pray for them every night in my prayer time. I call every one of your names out to the Lord. I do. I go down the list of those that I, can, that I know, and I call your name out to the Lord. And even those that have left us and gone somewhere else, I pray for them still, that they, wherever they are, that they are living for the Lord and giving him the best of their lives. Bless us, Lord, as we continue to serve you in these last few days of this year. Don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Don't any of us know what tomorrow is going to bring. But we know who controls tomorrow. It is you, Lord. Bless us and keep us until we meet again. For these blessings and all blessings I ask in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you all. And may heaven smile upon you. Keep the Lord in your life. Living for him the best that you know how. And he will bless you in return. God bless you. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Sheila.